Hi, this is my tutorial for Clip Studio Paint on how to draw different uniforms and the different ways that clothing can enhance our character design. Now obviously, I can't cover all different types of uniforms and clothing, so instead, what I want to do is help you know what to look out for when being inspired by clothing and to expand your toolbox to make interesting characters. Let's get started. Okay, so if you're studying clothing or drapery, then eventually what's going to come up is the different types of folds. I'm not going to cover all seven of the different types of folds in depth for this video. Instead, what I'll briefly touch on are these four. These are the ones I saw the most while studying uniforms. But if you're interested in the rest, I'll provide a list of additional resources, books, videos, for more information about all the folds in the description box below. Alright, the pipe fold is the most basic kind of fold. They're everywhere! It occurs when excess fabric bunches up in a pipe or cylinder form from a tension point. Now what would happen if I hunch over and bend the pipe fold? Well, that often gives the zigzag fold, characteristic because of its zigzag. You can see these as a pair of zigzaggy lines, but I find it helpful to see them as a bunch of triangles as well. Next up is the spiral fold, which is characteristic of sleeves and pants, if you roll them up. But you're not going to find one type of fold in one place only. The cool thing about folds is how they flow into one another. You can see some zigzag folds here too. Also, another thing to consider is that folds can be very dependent on the fabric, what it's made out of, how much there is, what's the form underneath. Take this loose sports jacket instead. Here we see a lot of zigzag folds compared to the denim. Besides the shape, notice how the triangles or diamonds usually have one side facing away from the light. Now all of these have been pretty self-explanatory, but here's the half lock fold. I was very confused about this fold until I had to make this video. It's often described as occurring when there's a sudden change in direction in the fabric or when the fabric folds onto itself. That never really helped me see what it looks like. So here's a video, let's see if you can spot it. Focus on the underside of my knee. In this clip, there will be one half lock fold followed by another, but they will be slightly different. Try to spot the difference. Did you see it? The half lock occurred when I bent my knee. Let's take a look at a few stills. I like to think of two cloth monsters trying to eat each other. One of them wins, and the other one gets partially or fully locked into the winner. So this first time around, Mr. Pink was the winner. Let's rewatch the clip and think of the cloth monsters. The Revenge of Mr. Orange. So as you can tell, it usually doesn't matter which one locks into the other one, but you just have to make a decision which one is going to overlap the other. And this occurs not only just in the knee, but also in the elbows or when the legs meet the torso, places where the cloth can bend sharply. We start with these seven folds because they are like our alphabet or vocabulary for our drapery. You'll see them repeated, or one type flow into another, no matter what clothing you're wearing. As we saw, they may look slightly different, exaggerated, or diminished, depending on the type of material, the cut, how loose or tight the fit is. Now, this video, or any video or book, won't help us get familiar with these folds. We need practice. One of the best ways that's always recommended to study drapery and get familiar with these types of folds is to draw from life. If you have a model, perfect. If you have family members that are willing, great. If neither, well you could always just throw a piece of striped clothing on a chair somewhere and draw it. Pattern or striped clothing really helps because you get a sense of what that fabric is doing as the pattern act as contour lines for the fabric. Okay, studying out of the way, if you're just making a character from imagination and you just need a quick refresher, then consider taking your own reference photos. You have clothes, I hope. You have a camera of some kind, maybe. So if you're confused how drapery works, then take some pictures of yourself in that same pose. Here is a character design I did for a contest a few weeks ago. One of the steps was to study clothing, and I did. So here's a picture of myself on the left, and my study on the right. And in the final painting, you can see how this really helped out to portray the clothing realistically. 
Okay, let's get on to some work uniforms. So I did a few uniforms to prepare for this tutorial and we'll go through them. Each outfit took around 20 to 40 minutes in real time and we'll go over some tips to help you draw these outfits in Clip Studio Paint and what to look out for when you're studying different kinds of outfits. Most of these were studied from reference. I started out with the line work and to help me out, I labeled the folds I saw on a separate layer. Now you can leave out folds or add in additional ones if you want to, you're the boss. Design it so that it looks pleasing to you. After the line drawing, I start with just filling in the local color, a very light gray. I make sure not to go full white or else I can't get any lighter for the highlights. Afterwards, I refer to the reference and use what I know about folds to render the drawing. For example, treating the pipe folds like cylinder forms and the zigzag folds like a pair of triangles. If you're just studying, there's no need to spend hours on one fold. Get the practice in and move on. The mileage is probably more important. To help you drape figures, Clip Studio Paint has a built-in, easy-to-use posing feature. Now I don't use this that often, so I don't know everything about it. I'll link to the official documentation below. I personally prefer to draw without the aid of a rendered model, so I don't have to rely on it all the time if I'm doing something traditional, for example. However, I can see it has huge use, especially for difficult poses, to double check your work, or to just speed through the process. Now let's explore some basic functions for this first. The menu can be accessed through clicking on this little arrow right here by the navigator or by going to window, material, and pose. Select the pose you want and get it to appear just by dragging it onto the canvas. This will create a new layer. Now the menu is a bit self-explanatory. You can control the camera with the camera icons the overall object with the object icons on the right. You can zoom in and out by holding right click and moving up and down. So I'll just get to the right zoom, and move the camera, rotate the figure. Um, we can also fine tune the pose. If we click on a joint such as the shoulder, we can see arcs pop up which control rotation. Obviously we can do this for the elbow as well. Lastly, for more details we can click on this bottom right icon here and this will bring up a detailed menu. Here we can adjust things like the overall body shape, the proportion of the different body parts. Okay, I'm gonna have nightmares. Uh, the lighting on the figure. And in the pose menu, we can pose the hand from open to close as well. I'll adjust these options to get a figure with his hands in his pocket. Now that the figure is posed, which will help a lot in draping this figure, but let's point out some common mistakes. First, you created this 3D model. Use it! What I've drawn here is already wrong. The 3D model shows you the center line and contour lines. Use these so you know where to line up the collars of a shirt, for example. Next, clothing has volume, so don't draw your clothes flat. Don't stick them directly onto the surface of the model. It's clothes, not skin. So here I am restarting the drawing, this time using the contours that are given on the model and also adding in some volume for the clothes, such as by the arm, around the back, and since this is kind of like a lab coat, it kind of hovers around the legs. Okay, so using the model as an underlay, I drew on the clothes and we have a solid foundation. Now I'll just hide the layer and finish up knowing that I have a well-constructed base in the perspective that I want. The rest of the process is the same as how I do everything else. Again, using the knowledge of folds to properly render out this uniform. If you want to draw a certain uniform, but you can't find the right reference for a good pose, consider using the 3D model to help you get started. This image, the tension points are also provided because the hands are stuffed into the pocket. And also, you end up having a little bit of a belly. Now after finishing these uniforms, let's see if we notice any patterns. Well, if I place these on a scale from tight to loose clothing, maybe it'll be more evident. When we have tighter clothing, uh, we generally see less folds overall, less variety of folds, and the folds we do see are thinner. On the other hand, with looser clothing, we will generally see more folds overall, more variety, and thicker folds. Now this isn't like a hard set in stone rule, there's very few rules in art, but it's just something that I observed while doing these studies. This is something you can look out for when you're studying your own uniforms or designing your own uniforms. How loose or tight is the uniform? What should the folds look like? 
depending on what you're thinking for your uniform, you might also see some of the other folds that I didn't really cover in these studies. Okay, so this isn't just a video on folds, it's on uniforms and character design. So beyond knowing about folds, we have to ask, why are they wearing that uniform? No, not just because so they're not naked. I'm talking about the function and the meaning behind the uniform. For example, this is a doctor's uniform. And we know it's a doctor's uniform because the stethoscope is there, and that's part of the uniform. That's the most obvious sign that it's a doctor's uniform. Doctors need to look professional and be able to monitor a patient's breathing, heart rate, etc. The stereotypical spy uniform is very tight and dark to avoid being seen, for more body awareness, and to ensure loose fabric doesn't get caught on anything. Chefs are recognized by the double-breasted coats to protect against spills, usually white to show cleanliness. And beyond that, there's another embedded meaning, and it's one of status. You know, the bigger the hat implies, that's the head chef. And the folds in the chef's hat are supposedly to specify the hundreds of ways they can prepare eggs. Why does a person in the military wear their uniform? Well, it's for camouflage, and it's also resourceful with all the pockets, storage for weapons, water, ammunition, etc. And that's probably more important to include than just the right folds. Just like the chef's uniform, there's also a symbol of status here. There's insignia to specify the rank of an officer. And from what I've seen, this is usually placed on the hat, the sleeve, in the middle, near the zipper, or all of the above. Different sections of the military can have different uniforms and different symbols for the ranking system. A lot goes into designing an outfit. So if you're drawing characters in the military or any other environment where there's a lot of structure, hierarchy, these tiny details can convey a lot of information. You know, showing who is higher rank, how important someone is, just by these tiny details on their clothes. You know, whether it be by symbols, like in the military, or how large or small a part of the uniform is, like in the kitchen. Or come up with your own unique way how the uniform differs. You can be creative with it. So to review, first, start to become comfortable with the different types of folds. Next, look at why is this uniform being worn? Is there a purpose? Is there a meaning? Is there some sort of status? You can really see how clothing can act as a visual language, a quick way to communicate attributes, values, all through what you're wearing. In some cases, the visual language is just created through popular culture, and there isn't really any meaning or function behind it. So an example that comes to mind is the stereotypical detective uniform. You know, from what I researched, the plaid deerstalker hat that we all associate with detectives simply just comes from Sherlock Holmes. You know, detectives in real life don't wear that. Okay, that brings me to our second clip studio paint technique for drawing uniforms. So for clothing that is heavily patterned or textured, a technique we can use is to create a custom brush with texture and transform it onto the surface of our uniform. The key part here is to have a solid foundation. So I'm drawing out the detective hat and defining my light source. I'm ensuring the folds are properly rendered, the shapes are refined. Basically, the texture just goes on last. Now, you could always just paint the plaid pattern on this hat, but I want to show you another way that can be quicker using Clip Studio Paint's tools. We're going to be using a custom brush and the mesh transform feature. So in your everyday life, if you happen to come across a nice texture or pattern, why not make a brush out of it? So after I took the picture of this pattern, I imported the picture into Clip Studio Paint. Now I want to make a new texture brush out of this. I'm going to apply a correction layer and turn the saturation to zero to make it a black and white image. Next, I'll apply a brightness contrast correction layer and bump up the contrast. Now I like this section of the image, but I want to have more repetition. So I'm just copying it and pasting it, making a bigger texture to use. Now, when I'm happy, I'm going to edit, register material, image, then check use for brush tip shape, then save the image in image material brush. Okay, so we have the material saved. Now to create a brush. I'm just going to duplicate a brush like the heart brush. Go into brush settings. Brush tip. Delete the old material. Search for and load in the material I just created. 
The key for this technique is to turn off pen sensitivity. So I'm going back to my hat and on a new layer set to multiply mode, I'm putting down my plaid pattern. Throughout this entire process, try to keep the brush size the same so that your pattern doesn't change shapes drastically. Okay, now for the fun part. I'm just going into Edit, Transform, and Mesh Transform. So this will allow me to grab the edges of my pattern and align it onto the detective hat. Now be careful, we want it to look realistic and for it to wrap around the form. So some key advice for this step. One. Think about how the form is moving. You want your pattern or texture to contour your object. Two, think about where the form is turning towards and away from you. You know, in this case, if it's turning away, the pattern will be all grouped up in a small area, so it will be much darker in value here. Don't be afraid to go over the edges because what you can do if you set this up well is go back to the layer with the hat, select the background with the magic wand tool, Go back to your patterning layer and just hit delete. This will get rid of the patterning outside of the lines. After the entire patterning has been finished, it might look a little bit too digital with pixel perfect cuts. So I like to go in at the end and fix up some of the edges. This last step could take you a few moments to a few hours. So spend however long you want to get the finish that you desire. Okay, with that technique finished, that ends this video. As a recap, we skimmed the surface of the types of folds and drapery, we applied that to drawing uniforms, and how that may change depending on how tight or loose the outfit is. We showed how to use Clip Studio Paint's built-in 3D model as an aid to draping a figure. Asked why outfits are being worn, looking at meaning and function and how clothes act as a visual language. And lastly, we covered a second technique using Clip Studio Paint's easy brush creation process and mesh transform tool to quickly detail pattern or textured clothing. I initially planned for this video to delve further into getting the most out of uniforms for character design, you know, beyond asking just why an outfit is being worn, but also who, when, where, and how. However, I thought I would keep this video focused on the Clip Studio Paint techniques, so let me know if you're interested in a follow-up video. I mean, I'll probably make it anyways. So, thanks for watching. Bye.